So you're good to go, Kathy. Hi. Um, welcome, everyone, to tonight's meeting of the JCPC. Um, I apologize for starting, those who are watching, for starting late. It was completely on me. I was a latecomer. Um, per the governor's order that we can conduct these meetings virtually, I'm going to start just going around the room to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. So when I call out your name, just say whatever you want to say to know we can hear and hear you. Um, Tammy Ellie. Here. Peter. Emily present. Alex. Present. Mandy. Present. Carrie. Present. And Andy. Present. So all members of the committee are present. Um, and I want to note that Sean is here with us, as is Paul, is, which they have, and Sonia, which they have been for almost every meeting. Um, tonight, um, we are turning to the report from the JCPC, and I sent everyone a copy of a, what I call a rough draft. I mean, this uh, was done solely by me, um, trying to look at notes from the various meetings. So I thought we could focus on what recommendations we wanna make. And we left off the last meeting with discussing several and I tried to capture them in the current draft. And then as I went through thinking of other points in terms of when we were looking at the five-year budget comments people had made. So I, I, took the liberty of converting some of those into recommendations as well. And I structured the report um, for the main recommendations regarding FY22, which is the year we're focused on coming in an executive summary. So I mean, if it's okay with everyone just to turn to those and we can, one way of doing this would be Sean to show that it's a page and a half of the executive summary, um, but I'm, open to any other suggestions, including things I missed and wording I have wrong. Kathy, um, how do you feel maybe if I, I pull up on the screen the recommendation section? Yes. And we talk about the recommendations and then if once we if we solidify the recommendations then we'll kind of go through the rest of the report and see if there's any sort of content um, on the rest of the report. Ab absolutely. I, okay. I wasn't clear. That's what I was thinking of doing. I think okay. they're all I think they're all in that first two pages called summary. Right, but you can now. But you can also go to there are some additional recommendations later. The summary tried to focus on major recommendations that had anything to do with FY twenty two. Um don't mind my comments. I made some comments on the right for just little note things to update. Um is this too small? Does that work for people or do you want, it, it, you can, anyone can suggest any other um, way of working with this document. I'm not seeing any. The, um, so this is really this, the bulleted list here is the recommendations. Right, so, so what I tried to say, um, and it can, um, Alex has not had a chance to do her wonderful editing that she did last time. So what I tried to say at the beginning is that we were basically um, endorsing the list that had been presented to us um, with some exceptions and modifications. So these were the recommendations. So we were recommending a total budget and then the total budget line, Sean will have to help me with this. Um, a total budget that exactly balanced, as you probably remember, the proposed budget was $15,000 above the available funds. Um, and that doesn't count the fact that there was 1.6 million in recommended debt. So this was the set of recommendations that we were working on last Thursday. And I just wanna say one thing about Munson and then just turn it over to everyone. Um, in the in the minutes that Sean took, we, it wasn't. There were two possible ways we were talking about Munson. One was to increase the budget um, so that they could do both. He could do both insulation and the more efficient uh, high back systems. But Jeremiah also offered that he could take the thirty thousand dollars of insulation out of his larger maintenance budget um, that was offered to us. We didn't make a decision on whether we thought that was a good idea. And he had he had asked for $200,000 in a general maintenance that covered a variety of things. 
So this was a question we, we clearly did focus on. We want him to go to the, the more efficient systems. So uh, do, what, what would be the best way? That was the one thing that I thought wasn't entirely clear. And I just chose one way of structuring it, which was to say, increase the budget. So it also includes ins uh, insulation. The rest, we talked about going up on the insul sustainability fund. And I, the number that was mentioned is $100,000. The resident capital request was talked about favorably and that we would take it out of this fund or use grants if they became available. And then offsetting those um, that that money, we were going to look at the unspent repurposing past appropriations as, as much as possible, reducing school and town technology. And then this last thing we laid off of, were we asking potentially to look at the Jones Library um, laptop request if the building is going to be closed for construction? The school van that I put in here, we had a lot of discussion that if at all possible, it should be a hybrid or electric. So this was just the discussion we had. It wasn't proposed that way. And then the last but um, not least was the $450,000 request for um, the North Amherst intersection. And I asked Sean just about 10 minutes ago that not doing that, authorizing that now, if the town decided to delay it, saves us $60,000 next year in debt expenditures. So it doesn't show up at all in this year's, but it has an impact on the next year, but on the FY23 budget. So I will stop there and get any reactions either to it's missing something not worded right or um, other. And I'm okay, I see Carrie's hand. Carrie? Apologies. Um, my question is with the, I, I fully support the recommendation to have the, the van be um, electric or hybrid. I'm just concerned that if we don't put some funds behind it, that that may end up having a negative impact on other priorities. So um, would we want to specify as we did up above that the money in the sustainability fund might be able to go to that? I just would hate to see we're already taking money out of the, and I know this, um, the school budget for the um co equipment that you know they, they said we could take so i'm wondering if maybe we would use some of that money to support the van being more expensive i'm just i think we should potentially po point to where that funding would come from or because it's the one where we don't we want to just stay on this one and i mean i think that's an explicit suggestion that we add a sentence here and to the extent that's more expensive than the what the request was that um, we could look to sustainability fund and or grants, you know, I mean, that kind of wording. So um, any thoughts on that? And I guess what I want to know is, should we go through each of those and then come back and vote on a package? Would that be the best way to proceed just to get the list? So any comments on Carrie's suggestion? Let's, I'll just use my role as chair to ask for that at this point. People like that idea? Neutral. I, I would put in the sentence about potentially using the sustainability fund for increasing cost with that. Okay. So is everyone agreed to that? I mean, we, we'll edit this so it reads right. Okay, so there's agreement. Yes. Okay, so I see Alex's hand went up and Mandy's hand went up. Um, Alex and then Mandy. So I'm, I'm just gonna start with the first bullet um, about the months in building HVAC. And I guess I wanna clarify maybe a discrepancy in my notes. Um, so when it was first pre presented, it, the discussion was $150,000. And then the second time I heard, and maybe I misheard that the VRF system was between 110 and 120 and that the 150 was for like insulation and maybe ceiling fan. And in response to Mandy Joe's question about should those be bundled together for cost efficiencies, the answer was no. So I, if, if, that, if my notes are correct, if that chain is correct, I guess I'm trying to figure out why 
we're bumping the budget by $30,000 for things that could be done at any point in time. And we don't create cost savings in doing them together, but perhaps my notes are incorrect. So I guess it's a question and a statement. <laughs> okay, so, so I had the same notes in terms of the insulation was adding 30, which got it up back up to 150. And that Jeremiah said, he either said he had enough money to do that out of his other budget or it could be done later. But then he, everyone described a very leaky building <laughs> that the air seeps out of it. So I think this is up to us what we want to recommend. So I hear what you're saying, Alex, that those are potentially separable and the 30 doesn't have to happen this year. So um, so I, I just jumped at leaky building, save on energy, because it's now going to be electrical bills um, rather than gas bills. So it would be good to conserve energy by insulating the building soon rather than later. So that was my mental thing. Um, does anyone want to and Mandy, you want to talk specifically to this? I can. That's not why my hand's up, but I'll, I left it up so I can talk to this. I, I, I also agree that that was the thing. So I wonder if our recommendation would be, you know, be more clear that the, the insulation estimate is $30,000. It does not have to go. There are no cost savings to doing it at the same time, but due to the inefficiencies of the building, um, if it can be found, if there's a way to fund it in FY22, do so, our recommendation is to do so, but if not, then please add it into the FY23 line or something like that. Okay, so we'll, we'll rewrite this to make it clear that the, the 120 is for the system, 30 is for the insulation, and then add that additional sentence. You know, if you can do it this year, great. If not, it's high priority for the next year. So, so I guess I'm trying to understand what that means. So are we giving them the 30,000, in which case I'm sure he will use it, or are we putting that 30,000 toward the increased value of the sustainability fund to be used as makes sense? Like, what are we doing with that 30,000? Well, maybe Paul and or Sean can find out. Jeremiah, I thought he said, you know, he was great to join us the second time that he thought he could squeeze it out of his $200,000 fund, which was general maintenance and interior. So I thought he was saying that he thought he could make the budget work for this year rather than it was an increase, but okay. I'm not- so, so we're saying don't bump the budget, just changing the way we're, we're wording it I rather think, than your suggestion but, to bump, okay. But maybe we, we should get clarity on that, on whether he really needs another 30. He doesn't have it anywhere. And I think we can only, even if we, increase double the sustainability fund. We can't probably buy vehicles, do small things and buy insulate. You know, I mean, maybe it will all work out magically with sustainability, but, but I think we could get clarity on this and we can just not have this be final language until we get some more information. I think the not bumping, but being clear that if it fits into the maintenance fund or the sustainability fund, that would be a great use of it. Um, and if not, please fund it in FY23. Okay. Like Unless there's 30,000 to be found somewhere, anywhere, but I'm not sure there is. <laughs> right, and you know, and I looked, Mandy, as you had earlier, there's on the three years older, um, Munson has 11,000 for interior maintenance and flooring and has um, another 20,000 so it has 30,000 for interim. I'm not sure what that is, but could any of that be drawn, you know, with the same idea, could any of that be repurposed to be insulation? I, you know, so I'm not sure what the original request, but it's over three years old in money. Okay, so, okay, so um, Alex, did you have another or, you, I mean, I think each person should just go through, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to go bullet by bullet. So the sustainability fund. So my notes said that we would increase the bucket of the amount, but I don't recall a conversation about a dollar figure attached to that. So I guess I was just curious if how did I did I miss that or did, was that arrived at somehow? Um, so I think I, Kathy, said that we could increase it. Um, 
when we were looking at this that we could increase it to 50 and this that would be what we would look um to say from either the computer lines the copier line or the um or the unexpended prior year articles however again that that number is up for you guys to discuss if you think that's too high again we, we think that we'll be able to spend you know pretty much whatever we put in sustainability at this point because there's a lot of there's a lot of projects um on the radar coming up so you know we I think we can spend it, um, but it's up to you guys what you want to recommend. I, yeah, I don't take I don't take issue per se. I just didn't recall naming that number and recommending that number was all. It, it wasn't. I don't think we did name a hundred. We I added the offer that he could find another fifty to fifty and got a hundred. And you know, sort of for and so I'm. I'm actually, I'm actually in favor of increasing it explicitly to 100, you know, doubling it since we're trying to draw on it. Um, but uh, Mandy, Peter, should we should we just go one, have everyone speak on the, the one item each time and then go to the next one? I think that would work best. So, uh, Peter, do you want to stay on this one? Yeah, I have nothing on this one. Okay. Mandy, your hand was up. I don't really have anything on that. We should probably put a number in there um, and say where it's going to come from <laughs> or where we're thinking of it coming from. And I think you did in the two bullets down. So so it might be better to move that bullet up so it follows. You know, I was trying to figure out which bullet went where because it's the, the th that bullet is explicitly where to find the funds. Okay, so then Peter, you were going to go yeah, into- right. I'm trying to follow the bullet sequence discussion, but now okay. that the bullets are moving, I'm a little confused. Because <laughs> my comment is about the, uh, that bullet, the computer equipment. So, okay. so this, this idea of, um, so there's two things in this bullet, right? There's repurposing past appropriations that remain unspent, which I, I think is like uh, an uncontroversial idea if we, if we refresh our accounting books and we find uncumbered fun funds, then yes, we should use that free money. Um, and then the, the second one is um, reduced school and town technology requests. So this was a little more ambiguous to me. I remember Doug saying if, if he needed to, we could reduce uh, part of the copier allocation. Uh, and then in a later discussion, uh, to paraphrase, I think a comment from Alex, she was like, well, we shouldn't penalize just the person who was nice enough to offer up, <laughs> who happened to be here and present in the style of it. Um, and then I think there was the, there was the, um, so I can't remember if this was a suggestion or if I talked to Sean about this, but Sean was going to talk to, um, to Doug to see, well, what, what amount could we actually reduce that to? Um, so if it's just the idea of find unencumbered past funds and offset the request for school and town technology, that's that's one thing, but to, to put it out there without condition is, is a little problematic. Kathy, can I speak to that real quick? Yep. Um, so I was able to touch base with um, Doug and Jerry after um, the conversation last week. So, um, you know, I was able to get some input on them about how much they felt they could reduce it um, without, you know, putting them in a tough position for next year. Um, you know, the computer, the thought behind the computers was that because of CARES, you know, there was a lot of purchasing of, of computer devices, um, Chromebooks and, and laptops this year. So that was one sort of area of town or school or, or library for that matter, um, that we sort of felt like we had bought a lot of it this year. Um, but I, but I think what we would do, you know, Paul and I would be to work with the departments to figure out how much they can reduce it without affecting their programming for next year. Um, to allocate to the, the sustainability line item. And so again, I, I have talked to, to Doug and Jerry. I still haven't heard back from um, Sean Hannon yet, but my guess is he's going to be in a similar place as um, Jerry. So um, I just am wondering, um, we can rephrase this and then Sean was also this repurposing past appropriations that was looking quickly there are some fairly big items Mandy had brought this up um, that are older than three years including things like uh, 
technology purchases for the schools. Um, so they weren't, it isn't uh, tech hardware, 31,000 from over three, over three years old that's still open. And um, so I'm not, I'm not counting the uh, Fort River roof where that had about almost 100,000, had 96,000 in not yet spent. So there was some thought that the school matched some of this. Um, and then Sean was going to double, as we said, double check in these three areas. So any other thoughts on this on terms of this was, this was literally a recommendation to find the money in these possible places, um, not explicitly this much here, this much here, and this much there. So it was written more generally. Um, Mandy and then Alex. Yeah, I, I had a couple of thoughts on this. The one is I figured the offset was, yeah, I, I made the point last year that I, I was concerned that the schools are the ones that seem to have a huge amount of FY 16, 17, and 18 um, unspent funds, including 33 and a half thousand for tech hardware. And so you can only buy so much. It, 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 it From my outside perspective, it seems like maybe there are asking for more than they buy every year and it's just building up and I'm not seeing the reduction at some point in a year saying, oh, we can do that offset. Um, and and I, I see it with buildings and grounds, but with building and grounds, um, I think it was said that, that we're catching up on that spending, but the building and ground was nearly the same amount unspent in those three years as the current year's request. Um, and so I'm just concerned that the requests might be slightly higher than they need every year and it's just building up. Um, and that's not, we don't know what FY 19 and 20 is even spent yet. So I, I want that offset to be able to find that 30,000 or even the 45 because of the other 15. Um, but I also wanted to talk about, I was concerned about the delaying summer, all of the library requests for laptops because the building will be closed for construction. My understanding was that um, they would still be used in an alternative location. So I would ask for a different wording. Laptops can be used anywhere. You know, they're, they're not, mo they're mobile. Um, so I wondered if it was for computer stations, not the laptops, and that the reasoning we could say is not, not because the building will be closed for construction, but to better match the available space to set up computers in the alternate location. So we're not buying computers that don't have anywhere to go. Um, that I think that's much better language. And then that would be if the, it turns out they have enough space to put everything in that they're talking about, then it goes through. If not, it gets just delayed. I mean, I think it's a delay rather than don't buy. Um, you know, and Alex, I know we weren't able to talk to Sharon. You said, and it's a question of sort of, in my mind, how many laptops currently exist that are in decent shape you know, that will have to be set up in some alternative space and how many more would this be? Um, so I don't, I just don't have a sense of how many total. So she, she did send it over to Sean. Yeah, she, I think she's, I, I have to talk to her more cause I, it was, I didn't get to discuss it with her further but I think she said that we could push it off a year. Um, but I, again, before I confirm that I wanna talk to her more about it to understand it, but. Yeah, and I and I think to to Mandy Joe's point, right? So there's going to be because we're we are wildly increasing the number of computers that we'll have in the larger space. So there's sort of multiple issues, right? One is we get new we get new computers every year, just like the school does, to replace old computers. And so when we move into a temporary space, we still need to refresh those computers. But it's the bump into like more computers that we don't necessarily need until I think it's like 2024 or whatever it is that she sent to Sean. So there's two bumps for us. One is the automated materials handling system. And one is the, we've got switchers and routers. And I mean, like we're actually gonna be a technologically savvy library instead of like a duct tape patched together that we are now. Um, and the other comment I would make is this language says, talks about the council endorsing the project and it doesn't matter because we're gonna to have to move into temporary space, whether it's a repair or an expansion project. So really our temporary library needs and how it impacts the budget isn't actually, it's, it's impacting the budget further on, right? If we don't expand, then we won't have more computers for the 3000 people who don't 
have computers, right? But if we, but either way, so it's the later years that the technology is sort of fungible depending on whether we go forward or not. But the moving to a temporary space and what that may or may not do doesn't matter. Like we're, we're gonna have to go to a temporary space no matter what. So I think we just need to change that language. So I think we can completely delete the current sentence as it's written and then put, um, you know, if Sharon has already, you know, we asked and it turned out these could be delayed a year, we can just put that in. That's part of an offset for finding the money. So we, we can just verify because that's it's $29,000. So it's, if if Sharon did say it could be delayed for a year, so we, we can, um, so it can be word, you know, delay some or all, you know, yeah. depending and, on, and I, depending and on I would also, space fit. Yeah, yeah. I, I would also clarify too, that when we move into a temporary space, whether it's for a repair or an expansion, that there are technology needs associated with that, right? Um, and I think that's part of a conversation that RIT is gonna wanna have with town. So I just, I'm, I'm hesitant to, like I'm, I'm happy to move money where it makes sense over the sustainability fund. And I think that's great, but I think we need to be flexible with what the needs are um, as things develop. So I guess that's what I want to throw out there <laughs> because if we move into a temporary space and it's not wired for anything, like we're going to have to do something, right? And what does that look like? And so just the budget go toward that. So I, I just, I think it's important to be flexible. And it doesn't, again, matter which project we choose, that need doesn't change. Okay, so that that sentence both, you know, anything that changes here would change in the body of the text too. So we we reword that sentence um, and then everyone will get to see this whole thing again. You know, I'll just send it out and people can do it. So did, so Carrie, you had your hand up also. Yeah, and I was actually going to comment on the sustainability fund piece. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment on what we've been talking about to stay on track or it's okay to go back to sustainability. I think that's fine. Okay. So I guess though, my only thought as we're um, increasing the sustainability fund is it feels like we're probably going to be, this is a new fund and we might be setting a precedent of the level at which kind of the, the, the lowest <laughs> level at the, I was going to say ceiling, I guess the basement level. So I, it's not that I'm against funding it at that level, but I'm thinking about, especially with all the capital needs going forward with all projects and stuff, if we just want to be, make sure we're comfortable with that as, as a precedent setting level that we're going to be putting it at. So I, I guess I'll look to Paul and Sean. Um, this, this is specifically focused just on next year. So the question would be, are we going to be committing? I think that's a good question. Are we committing then to 100 every year going forward? Or are we saying for this particular year, um, we want that to be the pad of money and we'll revisit it again next year, which would be a way of, of wording it. Mandy? Yeah, since this is the first year, we might be able to say we don't know how much we need. Um, and so we do need to reflect after, you know, at next year's JCPC on whether the amount was appropriate or not, but but explicitly saying that instead of saying this is the floor, as Carrie was saying, it's a very good question Carrie brought up. Kathy, can I just add to that? Yep. Um, also, again, we intentionally left this very broad so that we can use it for a range of things such as, you know, and upgrading the, the school van to be a hybrid or electric option. Um, you know, there's always studies, but you know, there's pre like tangible things that we could do with this money um, that I don't see the need going away anytime soon um, as we replace more vehicles in the future. So I think there will always be a, you know, at this level, at the 100,000 level, there's gonna be ways to spend this going forward. I see Paul, nod Paul is nodding his head as well. <laughs> Okay, so I will, I will put Mandy's wording in, but the, in this recommendation, but then in the body, I will add that wording that there's likely to be this kind of need and it's been left flexible. I'm trying not to make this um, a lot longer. You know, I, I took a stab just, I, I'm a fan of executive summaries, which is why I put one on. <laughs> And the whole thing, even with the executive summary, is only six pages long. So it is a little bit overkill to have a page and a half summarizing it. But just to highlight 
um, agreement. So any other comments? Um, Mandy's hand is up and Alex's hand is up. Yeah, I have a comment on, uh, sorry, I have a comment on the, what I think is the next bullet point, the resident capital request for a study. Um, I think the school committee might have voted the capital funding, the regional school committee for a portion of this study. So I, the, I guess I, I'm asking for a change in language. Um, if they voted it, then I, I had said, is it contingent upon them funding a portion of it too? But if they already voted that, then it's already there. Um, uh, but the other one is, could we be more specific that the recommendation is that um, the money be, th this portion of that study, this portion of the money, the money that's coming from the town be specifically used for town land only instead of the regional school district land? Um, I will, Peter, did you want to react to that? Yeah, just a point of info. So part of the capital, um, FY22 capital plan that the regional school committee voted last Tuesday included $15,000 and the exact description of the item was renewable energy study with town of Amherst. And so, so that could be interpreted as part of this or a share of this? Yeah, I believe so. Is Carrie, was that your understanding as well? Yeah, and, and I actually had an opportunity over a year ago, I think I sat down with Mike and the, I'm sorry, the superintendent, superintendent Morris and, and the sponsors of the bill. And I asked them this question about where, you know, why, why the high school, you know, rather than, you know, one of our, our lots that is owned by the town of Amherst. And I think the because it was a high school sponsored, I'm not saying, I'm just gonna give some background. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with this, but but I think it was really important to the sponsors of the bill because they are high school students that the study be done on the grounds of the high school. Um, now, you know, I, I hear what you're saying because it, it is region owned land, um, um, but I, so I, I guess I would be opposed to putting in the language that it has to be on the town of Amherst. I think the town of Amherst would get a benefit from it, even if it is on region on land. Um, and I know that it would go against the the, the sponsors um, desires, but it is just a study. So it, it is possible. Um, it may not lead to anything in which case maybe there, we could include the town of Amherst and like maybe expand the scope of it to include other sites that aren't region owned exclusively and place it where it's you know best suited. But um, that's just a little background on the request. Can I clarify, Kathy? Yep. Yeah, I guess I guess I wasn't clear enough. Um, I'm assuming the fifteen thousand would go to the region owned land and any additional. I, I just want to make sure there's town owned land included on that so that the money the town is spending here is town owned land I wasn't expect I was ex still expecting that 15,000 from the regional school district vote to cover at least one parking lot probably the high school um, so not exclude the regional land but somehow say that the expectation is this CIP funds would allow us to expand that beyond regional school land to town owned land okay I can I can try to do that. I just want to um, weigh in on this because I also feel that even if the regional school hadn't put in 15, I would be in favor of this to include the regional schools because I think we get the entire budget gets a huge benefit over this long term. Um, and the difference in the, I think we're at 80%, are we, am I right on the formula, Peter and Carrie, that when it comes to capital, we, we pay 75 or 80? It's, it's back to the straight formula. It's not I the- You know better than, than us. <laughs> Andy may know, yeah. It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, you know, so- um, It's not the regular formula. Um, it's actually has to do with the EQV in each town, so actually, we so pay, even uh, so even though this is capital, Andy, so cap capital is uh, capital goes under a different formula. It's not the same way as for the operating budget. And it's the EQV. Sean can confirm that. If, yeah, Andy, Andy is correct. Um, 
the capital is all EQV. The regular budget is a mix of a whole bunch of stuff. Right now. And then what Amherst share then would be, am I right? It's in the 75% to 80% range or somewhere like that? Yeah, it's like 80%. So we're talking about 80% of 15,000 would be the town of Amherst anyway. Um, you know, that's what I just think it's such a small amount of money if that's the part. But so one way of bypassing this issue so much is saying um, the resident capital request for solar academies on the regional schools and the elementary schools and town land. Um, so just to make sure it does, and it would be combined with any funds available from the regional, from the regional school capital budget. We could write that broader. Yeah. And, and I also say, Kathy, you know, as I've said with this before, if we are able to get a grant and get the technical expertise provided to us to do this study, um, you know, we would also probably look to see if they could do the region, some of those region parking lots as part of their study to really do like a town wide look at it. Um, because obviously the high school roof, the middle school roof and some of those parking lots are, are good candidates potentially for solar. So, um, you know, it's possible that the grant would cover the region side as well, at least for this first phase of the study. Okay, so I will, I will rework the, so I take it that everyone is in favor of saying yes to this. So the question is how we, how we were word it. So we're clear what we're recommending, correct? Yes, I think so. Alex? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up. Sean actually was, I think, discussing what my question was. So my notes, and and again, maybe I didn't totally understand was that we were recommending that this project go forward and that it be funded by grant money that Stephanie was going after. And if the grant couldn't fund it, then we would pull it out of the sustainability fund, which isn't exactly how this reads. And so I guess I just wanna confirm if that's our understanding, maybe we tweak the language to read a little more closely to that. Okay, so so it would be so it would be worded that first seek grants and then if we can't cover it with grants, go to the sustainable. Okay. And then you know when when they presented, it, it seemed like some of what might be available was actually technical expertise to work on the ground. You know that it might be a gift of labor rather than a gift of money. <laughs> you know, that there are experts out there who would come out and work with us. So that clearly would have to be worked out. It's not something we have to um, work on. Uh, Peter. Yeah, just jumping around a bit. So um, back to the computer town technology request. So to, to reflect the, um, the description that Sean gave about um, that they would, that Paul and Sean would work over the course of the year with the departments about what the what the capital needs were. I'm sorry. What the technology needs were. Um, just just adding like the words as feasible to the end of reducing school and town technology requests. Yep. Because then it says, okay, we're going to try and reduce them. We'll we'll see if we can get it to a reasonable level. But it doesn't. It's not a hard commit that we're going to do a zero sum offset where we fund, in this case, the months in the sustainability fund, and then, you know, to the degree it has to, it gets it gets cut down. I just want to make sure that there's like a it's not a, you know, this for that kind of exchange. At least that's how I feel. I'll, I'll no, feel like. no, no, I think that's fine. You know, I'm seeing, you know, Paul, Paul is here and Sean is here. And I know in the past, what happened is magically everything just happened when we saw a revised capital request, but we're not, we're, we're hopefully go, coming with our final report and some of these can happen. It, it looked like there was that. So adding that word is perfect, makes perfect sense to me. Any other thoughts on this set? Also, just I wasn't sure whether um, on the at this coming fiscal year, I didn't capture anything else that we were talking about um, in terms of recommendations. So there was um, we've got a table with every single item on it, and I don't the big one, which is a little bit down below, is delaying the North Amherst um, uh, the interstudy the 
intersection study, which is 450,000. And it's, you know, these are where you don't directly see it in the budget because it's next year's cost because it was funded by debt. So I just, I see Tammy's hand is up. So Tammy, I don't know whether I'm skipping by something you wanted to address. Well, I just wanted to make sure you're going to fix the, the thing about the library because um, totally the bill. Okay. Okay, good. You know, so Sean could, if he wanted to, we can just right now, just delete all of that wording, you know, to say we're going to do it, just a red, red exit out. Okay, good. And, and then, redo it. <laughs> it okay, it, thanks. It, it's, it's not there anymore. It has nothing to do with the council voting or not. It has to do with, you know, matching the request to the space we think will be available and delay to the exactly. extent. Exactly, great. And delay to the extent it makes sense. Great, thank you. Okay. Any other on this set? You know, I wasn't sure on the North Amherst intersection. Um, one question, and I think, Sean, you were answering it. You know, when I spoke to Paul separately, he said we wouldn't do the 1.8 million without a grant, but I think it was in the um, debt service costs for out years. You know, so the when you when you look at the five year costs, the 1.8 million was in those. So if we think that should be grant funded, not town funded, it will um, adjust that budget in FY 24, 25, and 26. Am yep. I correct? That's what Sean told me. And it's it's a couple hundred thousand in each of those years. It goes down if we're not doing if we're not spending 1.8 out of town money with the bond. So it, may, it makes actually a pretty big difference over the five-year period on, um, if nothing else, it brings it back into balance. <laughs> Some of the out years, um, FY23 was 153,000 deficit and 54 was a $33,000 deficit, despite going up on the share of general revenue that was going into capital. So does anyone want to reopen that? Because it's it's a, yes, you do or no? Yes, you want to reopen. So Alex, go. Yeah, I, I guess I, again, maybe it was one of those nights where I was asleep, but I like, I know that you and Mandy both, Mandy Joe both had comments around the North Amherst intersection, but I, I don't feel like I participated in a comment where I was making a recommendation. And so I guess I, if, if we're making a recommendation, I would like to know more. And I would like to hear from either Sean or the town manager about the North Am Amherst intersection. And like, is, are, is everybody like, are, are we just signing off on something that they're already recommending? I, I, don't, I don't know the ramifications well enough beyond like it balancing the budget of, of us asking to delay. So I just don't feel <laughs> equipped to be making that recommendation. So I just appreciate a little input. <laughs> Okay. Paul has his hand up, Kathy, if you want Paul. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, go yeah. Paul. So, so this is a project that um, we had applied for MassWorks grants for previous, previously. Um, the, um, you know, this year we chose a different tact and went for South Amherst, for the Pomeroy, and we got the grant for Pomeroy. Um, and the state found that to be a more compelling um, grant application, which we're pleased to get. But um, we continue to see activity in North Amherst. We will need to do this intersection at some point. We've, we're poised. We already made the investment with purchasing the gas station. Um, so, uh, you know, I think um, it, it will have to wrestle with all the other priorities we have. Um, so I, I think keeping it on, on the on the uh, JCPC uh, on the on the capital plan is important. Um, you know, my belief is that we should always be seeking state funds for this type of project because otherwise it soaks up so much of our capital. So that's not clear guidance, I don't think. But it. Well, Paul, do we need to support? Do we as a town need to spend four hundred fifty thousand dollars? to make it more likely that we could, would get 1.8 million? I, I, would, I would need to, th we'd have to think through our strategy on that. I don't have the answer for you on that. Okay. I mean, given that we just got a grant this way. Andy? 
Actually, that was exactly my question too, whether the engineering study is an important prerequisite for getting the grant funds. And I think we need to, maybe we can just write it in that fashion and just say that we only recommend the $450,000 if um, there's uh, evidence that spending that money would enhance significantly enhance our ability to get the grant for the entire project. Okay. Does it, I, Alex, does that also address your concern? Wording Completely, it? yeah. No, yeah. that's great, thank you. Okay, that I am writing as fast as I can, but I think I can capture those words. You know, and I, I mean, actually, on this particular thing, I know we earlier, um, Paul, when we applied, we had an engineering study, which was described to me as 25% of an engineering study, you know, so that we had some specs. Um, but one of the issues is we don't have 100% agreement on what it is we want to do. So you certainly don't want to do the engineering study until you're sure what we're asking them to do. Um, so we have had some, some work done for some amount of money so far on this. Um, that isn't just a traffic study. Okay, we'll re reword that. Any, anything else on this? And I realized that I just sat there and took my interpretation um, and clearly it focused everyone's comments extremely well. <laughs> So is there anything missing from this list that we were, when we were focused on FY22? Um, do, should we, before we talk about anything else, should we, do we need to take a formal vote on this revised list as these are our set of recommendations for FY22? Should we make a motion to do that? I just, I don't know whether, you know, M Mandy. And I guess my only question is, and I'm, I'm quickly scanning now, you then, you had copied those recommendations down onto the end of page three into page four. Are there yeah. anything listed on those recommendations that aren't listed above um, that we'd need to potentially review? I don't, like it. I don't think so. And what I would do is completely every, any, you know, start on the inside and make sure that the wording matches, you know, so it's not like we say it one way at a time and not another. No, I don't think so. So what I did do later on is that, you know, it says at the beginning too, that we recommend the work that went into giving us everything early on at the very beginning. We want that to become a standard practice. So we both liked it and we thank them a lot for doing it. Um, um, and then later on, um, we can talk about the, I did put some wording on the out years. Um, so, but these were, I think Mandy, these were the only ones that focused on FY22. Peter. So what is it you wanna vote on? Right now, well, the, well, it, well it, the question would be, are people comfortable with these, consider them revised as the set of recommendations for FY22 that we are comfortable having in this report? I mean, you get to see the report again, but that this is all we want to say in terms of our recommendations to the manager, considering what was originally presented to us, where we're assuming not, none of those line items are changed, but we're reacting to that set. So, so do you mean the items themselves or, or how they're, they've been worded as revised in the last half an hour? As revised in the last half an hour. Okay, that I would find a little harder to vote on just because we're watching the edit in real time and we're trying to like, okay. unless, unless, unless you felt there was like a major process efficiency to be gained. Um, no, I don't, I don't okay. feel it. But that's just me. <laughs> so my question then would be, um, we have a tentative meeting for next week. So 
a revised version of this can come back to everyone and we can meet quickly next week because there's, you know, if people want to see the wording changed. So that that's just, you know, and last week we didn't want to vote because we didn't have wording. So this, you know, so, so revise the wording and come back for a, sh a short meeting next week. Because I don't think we can't do it um, virtually. We can't just send around the, the revised report. Um, I, I'm looking for any kind of guidance on this, on getting to a, a final version of the report. Peter. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine doing whatever people are comfortable with. I think I think this process of of editing real time and getting it to what we think is final is good. Then we have some time to like read it after after the meeting, and then I think like you suggest we should be we should be able to come back next week if we get through everything today, um, with with it either unchanged or with or with minor changes that people bring from after having read it. Um, okay. I don't know. Does everyone agree with that way of approaching this? Okay. So then. Maybe, you know, so there are a couple areas that um, well, you all have the memo, but I have it in front of me too. Later on, I flagged, um, Mandy had made a comment that um, looking at out years um, to the extent possible coordinate with CPA. So if anything is on the list that could potentially be spent um, off the CPA tax money. So I put that in as a recommendation. And then the other one I, um, and we can, Sean can probably find these and happy to reword them, is if you look in out in the out years, we go, we jump up to 10%, then we jump up to 10 and percent capital. And this is so we can get all four of the big building projects in and the school isn't, is a debt service override. So it's not actually in it, but that will be, that is going to put some pressure on decreasing spending on roads and others. You can see it in the line items. And I just thought we should recommend that when Paul presents this to the world, that he uh, highlight the fact that these are some choices that are being made or will require choices to be made. Even if we're not approving this time all five years, we are looking at the five-year budget. Roads drop down by about half of what they are and some of the other lines drop down a lot because debt service goes up by a butt. That's just looking out. So I, I put in some wording on mainly encouraging the manager when he presents this to also say something about those, those out years. But Alex. So um, I have some words, I think they're wordsmithing, but I don't know. I, I don't know whether I can just send them to you offline versus, you know, um, doing it here per se, but um, we had, sorry, I'm trying to scroll through where, so there were um, recommendations, I guess there were a couple, I guess, where, where are we? Where should I be commenting? Well, well, you know, Sean has the whole document, so I think it would be fine for people to call out, you know, on page whatever. Right. So, that, so on the recommendations, which I think is the next section, um, there's language in there about the proposal of a building maintenance fund. And again, like I remember a conversation about that, but I like I'm 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 having this disconnect between like conversations had and recommendations that we're making. And I don't necessarily take issue with creating a proposed maintenance fund to support projects, but I'm I'm not sure what that means and what we're like, are we like I think Peter had talked about like instead of people doing high level budgets like you you know take that excess and like I guess I just I want to understand what that recommendation what does that mean Kathy, <laughs> what does that I, look like Kathy can I speak to that real quick sure. um so I think that that's just um that's not anything new I think it's just maybe the way it's captured here is a little bit different um so we've always had sort of a general building repair project um, so I think it's just the way it's being captured here, you know, it sort of is a maintenance fund because it is sort of for general projects that come up throughout the year. Um, but it isn't, um, it isn't like a new thing because we have done that for so, uh, several years. Okay, so maybe we fixed that to clarify that we've 
think it's important this continues or I mean I don't I don't know that we've called this out in the past so I guess I'm trying to figure out why we're calling it out which I don't take issue with I just needs to be clear that it's not something new yeah, yeah I think in some ways it is good to call out because there has been there have been a lot of questions on maintenance and things of that nature so it is good to I, I think highlight that we have um, you know this project that is specifically for general maintenance throughout town uh, but you're right we should make it clear that it, it isn't a new thing it's just it is increased this year because of the accessibility um, study so Mandy Joe, I don't know if you want to I mean I can keep going in that section or if you've got a different section my, my next comments in the new JCPC process section so okay so I guess the only thing I other thing is the next paragraph um, I, I feel like we are proactively talking about sustainability and all the money we're throwing toward it. And then we sort of like sweep under the rug at the police station that we're possibly choosing the less sustainable option, which I don't take issue with. I just, you know, um, like let's admit we're not doing a full VRF system, right? Like it's okay that it's, it's the choice that wasn't recommended didn't make sense, but I guess I just wanna be consistent in how we address things. <laughs> And so, you know, if we want to say a wholesale, you know, replacement of the existing system with a full VRF to, you know, whatever, I just want to be consistent and not pretend, not pretend, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, okay. like we're, we have to make choices, right? We have to make choices about where putting money towards the most sustainable option makes sense and where it doesn't. And I think if we aren't being a hundred percent candid about that, it doesn't serve anything. So that would, people can feel otherwise. That's just my thought. <laughs> Okay, so I think you're asking to put the words full BRF that gets us off fossil fuels because it was the double thing of when when Jeremiah went through the extent to which. Right, we're still moving. We're still moving to an electric chiller, which is great, right, but right. it's not right. Like, let's right. at least be honest. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So that yellow highlight that I put in there is purely that if we are recommending a balanced budget, we're saying it has to be $15,000 lower. I don't know whether we need to say that or not, but the budget that was given to us was $15,000 above the available funds. And Kathy, we did, um, just as a uh, reminder, we we have a unexpended prior year article that's roughly $15,000, which would um, increase the funding side by that amount. So that, that's sort of what my comment is that we can talk through how to- Okay, so we can, we can just reword that, you know, after we met this happened, you know, that it's now in bad, it's not, in, you know, the sheet, the sheet that is in shows a negative 15. So that would be one that we could potentially just revise. I mean, we, yep. yeah, okay. And Andy. Yeah, just uh, going back quickly up to the police station again, uh, my understanding of part of what the recommendation was from Jeremy was that uh, because um, solar is a possibility for that building, it, it creates a difference and um, that he was just factoring that in um, as to why um, the technology didn't need to exactly be the same as Munson. Because I, I was really troubled by it a lot at first in trying to understand it. And if I don't understand it correctly, it might be good to just have somebody check with him uh, just in a single phone, one of us calling him to make sure we have it right. Uh, the uh, building is a 24-7 building. And so it has continuous demand for reliable um, HVAC, and uh, so we want to make sure that we understand this and have it right. Okay. So I think all these suggestions are write write this longer with maybe a few sentences rather than a simple one. My he did in fact say you're asking for a huge amount of money and closing the building for a while to get no real energy save, you know, no cost savings, but, um, and therefore chiller, may, chiller as proposed makes sense, but we can reword 
all of this and put some pieces of solar as a not just a possibility, but I know we we're thinking about looking at that for the because the roof is big enough, right? And it's oriented in a way where we could get solar. Okay. Andy, is there more on that or is your hand just no, no okay. gone. That's fine. Okay. Other sections moving down? Peter? Um, let's see. Uh, top of page five, right above where new JCPC process starts. Okay. Okay, stop. Um, that was fun. Um, so, so this first sentence here at the very top uh, is from 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 the things that I'm engaging in this process on is like one of the most important sen sentences for me. So I'm glad you included it. That it's ambitious and will likely result in pressure on operating costs. Um, my personal preference would be to, to strengthen that language because it, it is my main concern um, with our, our capital expenditures uh, this year and, and in, the, in the coming years. Um, to whatever degree that people are comfortable uh, with the language so something like would result in intense pressure or will result in cuts to level services across the town. Um, just given the, the likelihood of the, the one to one and a half percent operations budget that, that Sean's been talking about. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to use this as a opportunity just to drive some argument, um, but it's just the general theme of the zero sum pressure that capital costs these five years are going to be putting on the operations budget um, is, is, is something that I would like to have clear in the report. Hey, can I, I just wanna, um, I'm perfectly willing to put the word intense in. I guess I do have a question of Sean and Paul because they there was a recent revision on revenue forecasts. So I don't know to what extent um, FY 23, 24, 25, you know, if, if those also are going to revise, some of the pressure will be less intense. The, the worst year by far was going to be the FY 23 year, you know, in terms of various things. So, um, but it, FY 23 is intense. And Sean, when he did this, Sean can speak, did not divulge what 24, 25 and 26 look like. Sean? <laughs> So think we just saved two hundred thousand dollars by you know kicking North Amherst intersection down the road. So that that'll help everything a little bit. Um, but on a, a more serious note, so there's a couple things. One, you know, even when I guess even when we have two and a half percent increases, which is sort of our normal, there have been cuts to level services at you know for various department budgets. Um, so I guess I would want to distinguish, you know, are we just talking about because we're not at the two and a half percent or it, or is it because we're not going above two and a half percent? So that, that's sort of one thing I'm thinking about. And then the second thing is, you know, there's, there's still a lot that's going to play out, I think, over the next couple of years um, with the, you know, the federal stimulus that came out now. And so we don't have a ton of information on that. And we're still looking at how that fits into the picture. But, but I would hesitate to say, you know, this will result in cuts to level services, um, you know, in a year that we, we haven't got to that year yet. Um, so that's sort of where I'm at. I, I think it is right to say that, you know, going to 10 and a half percent will, um, you know, put is, is ambitious and will maybe put stress on sort of this relationship. But, um, but I think we still need to get there and see what things look like before we say it's going to cut, have a cut to level services. Mandy. Yeah, I would have, I, I, I'm with Sean, I would object to using the word intense um, because we saw that when that first capital plan came out, um, the recommended operating budgets were only gonna increase one to one and a half percent or something, and now we're above two. Um, you know, And so that might ease the actual pressure on next year's budgets anyway, because they're already higher than we expected when that first plan came out. But but beyond that, it's not just what, you know, particularly for the regional school, Amherst's increase is not necessarily our limiting, what, what our financial guidelines are for the Amherst assessment for the regional school is not necessarily the limiting factor on whether the regional school district has issues with its regional budget. Um, 
Some of that's on which assessment method you pick. Um, and so to lay it all on Amherst and this financial plan when for some of the operating budgets, it's not just Amherst, um, I would have a problem with. So I, I'm okay with the language as is, but I would object to making it stronger in the way Peter asked for it. Andy? And uh, uh, first following up on what Mandy just said, I tend to agree because I, uh, the push for a switch in the uh, method for assessment is not being driven by um, an analysis of what is best for the um, health of the school budget. It is being driven by what is yeah, perceived point, to be Point health. of order, point of order. Yeah, so we're drifting into items that are regional school committee policy questions. I, didn't, I never brought up the assessment method. I understand this is an opinionated, people have strong feelings, but we're now getting into items that appear on a quorum. Uh, I'm sorry, appear, appear on the, the agenda of other committees that there are some members here on. So I, I don't mean to, to uh, tell people not to share their opinion here, but I never mentioned the school budget. I never mentioned the regional school budget. I never mentioned the assessment method. And I understand we have disagreements on those topics, but if we could keep it just to the topic at hand, that would be appreciated. Okay, well, I, Mandy could respond if she wants, but she it did start with the question that you had raised about putting a extra word on um, preceding pressure. And the uh, point that was being made was, is that there's lots of different reasons why there might be pressure, but that it's not necessarily, it shouldn't necessarily fall on our policy. But let me, um, having said that, go on to just one other topic for information purposes. Um, the, we do know that there's a fair amount of stimulus funds that is coming to Amherst um, and uh, Paul has been working on trying to get information about the exact amount and what the rules are for how it can be used and over what period of time it could be used. Um, it will go onto a finance committee agenda um, as soon as there's actually something to talk about when we have that information and um, we'll try and get a, uh, that information around publicly um, that that discussion is going to take place when we have the ability to have that conversation. So, so Andy, are you suggesting, I mean, this would be information we could add here. Um, you know, receipt of stimulus funds may ease the pressure. Are you suggesting putting a sentence in something about stimulus? You could, you could say that because, I mean, it, it is going to be additional revenue for the, for the town. <clears throat> the question is, questions of how much and how it can be used and how quickly it has to be used um, are really what we're talking about. Uh, what are going to affect some of these questions. I don't know if Sean or Paul have anything to add to that because they've been actually more intensely involved in trying to figure this out and what to say to the finance committee than I have. Uh, I've just been waiting. I think Sean had his hand up. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would hesitate to put that in here explicitly. I think, we, again, this is a recommendation to Paul yeah. um, and he knows about it. Um, so, so I, I guess I would hold off putting it in there okay. uh, until we have more information. Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex. Yeah, I guess, I mean, as, as you know, I mean, and Andy, Tammy and I have all been on the JCPC, you know, for, for a while now. And I guess like the paragraph, and I think maybe what some of the older members are taking issue with is it's not a surprise that like, you know, that the that the capital budget's going up to 10 and a half, like 10 was the plan all along. Um, and, you know, COVID was definitely a difficulty. And, you know, the decrease in roads and sidewalks, like this is this was all the plan. And, and I guess the way it's written 
makes it feel like like we've discussed this new development and it's not a new development. I mean, it doesn't make it less difficult, doesn't make the conversation you know, any more challenging, but it's not new information. I mean, this is the way it's been. So I guess maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just phraseology and word choice around like, right? I mean, if you go back to JCPC, you know, presentations for the last like six years, they're gonna talk about this plan and how it's gonna play out. So I just, I guess I just, I, I don't want it to read like, you know, we're taking up something new and this, you know, like, oh my God, we're just realizing like the difficulty it's gonna be. I just, that's phraseology. And I would also say too, I guess I would ask Sean the preceding three paragraphs above are, is that accurate? Like, have we made decisions yet? Like this reads like, things have been decided to a certain element. Um, and I guess, again, being sensitive around the library, words like as much as relative to the town, which the town, like I just, the language reads in a way that to me as a library trustee, I'm not comfortable with. It feels agenda driven versus fact driven. And so I guess I would just ask that those three paragraphs be revisited for what's known and what's not known and be written in a way that mirrors that. Okay. I mean, these, we, we, none of, we really did not focus much on the whole five year set other than to look at it and um, see what's coming. No, but, but, but I would argue yeah. that these paragraphs. No, no, and I, no, like, I, like an agenda rather than a fact based. Yeah, no, I, so I'm thinking just um, take the discussion out, take, I, I see what you're saying, Alex, and I, they can be reworked. You know, one of the things Annie and I talked about when this first came to us, um, the, the larger capital plan, is that we haven't actually sat down to say this is the plan. This was one possible way of making it all happen. <laughs> you know, and you have to put out one possible way of making it all happen, including the fire station and DPW happening at the same time, a school and a library, you know, rather than over a 10 year period. This, if you do that, this is what it starts to look like. So I think this just can be reworded a lot to just say this is a possible view of what this would look like with these things coming in. Period. You know that. But we didn't. We didn't opine in this committee, right? right. We specifically removed the five capital projects from right. no, this exactly. committee. No, we, exactly. We we did not at all. You know. So this so, is so to opine on one methodology versus another doesn't yes, make any sense to me. I'll just. Yeah. I'll just rework them substantially just to observe that because they're all coming in this is what you get in a five in over a five year over the five years okay revise next mandy said um new jcpc process she had comments in this section Yep, so if we're there, um, it's to the last paragraph. Um, so we also suggest consider ways to profile major capital expenditures. Uh, I just thought it could be reworded to be clearer. I, I had a suggestion to say um, profile major capital expenditures in the enterprise funds and through the Community Preservation Act in public presentations for a more comprehensive summary of capital improvements across all funding areas. You know, I, I, I just thought it was a little wonky in how it was worded, that's all. Okay, so can you just send me that word? Yep. You know, and this was just, um, you know, that the thought is this is a capital plan that focuses on part of our capital. And so trying to get that, you know, meanwhile, we're spending $11 million for a centennial plant over in an enterprise fund, you know, just that in some way of bringing those together, that'd be great. And Paul, I don't know what you think of that recommendation, but it's, it's, in a capital plan, you know, when you're coming up the capital improvement plan, even if JCPC is not focused on those, they feel like they're part of the bigger picture for the town. So mm -hmm. to, to try to think of some short way of, without making the report be longer. Mm -hmm. I understand. I also just wanted to mention that Sean is having internet connectivity problems. That's why he dropped off. Okay. So and that's why you lost the image. <laughs> so I apologize for that. He'll be back on, I'm sure. Okay, so Mandy has a, I have that yellow, I have yellow shedded anyway, you'll send me wording for that.
Any other comments? And the other thing I say, if it's you know lines in the way they're written, I think it's fine just to send me all of those as well. Um, you know, and then I will incorporate what we've done specifically here. And it's Thursday. I can certainly get them back to you by Monday morning. You know, to have a revised draft because it's not a you know uh, if anything was missing. This is quite a bit shorter than it's been in the past. Um, I did have a, a few questions on appendices. Right now, Sean is going to copy in the big spreadsheet that shows five years of how many vehicles we're buying all the way down. Should we add the vehicle inventory we got? It, it will be end up being like a 30 page, 40 page document, you know, vehicles just go on, or should we reference them and a link? Um, so it was a question just pure, purely on how big you want this report to be if someone is downloading it. We have the report from that we received at the very beginning that has all that information in it. So we could just put a hot link to it rather than put vehicles into here. I think we need to put the detail that's not there yet on the five years of what we were looking at in out years, but Okay, so shorter, no, ve no vehicle doesn't get put in here. And I couldn't, Sean sent me the spreadsheet, but it's landscape and trying to bring a landscape version into a portrait version without, um, he, he, he'll do that toward the end. Yes, Mandy. Yeah, I was wondering, so so Appendix B, the, the detailed spreadsheet, do we really need to include that? Um, you've included all the projects for funding for FY22, but I assume your your Appendix B or whatever it would be would be the the sort of line by line that just goes on that shows what would be potentially funded in 23, 24, 25, and 26. And well, I'm wondering if it's just easier to include the hot link. Okay, uh, I'd take anyone's suggestion. It's what you looked at, Mandy, when you asked about some of the things that could this be funded by over at CPAC? Could this be funded? So it was looking at the specific items. I, I'm fine either way. I mean, Paul is going to have this in the final report. So Alex, thought on that? I'm a fan of hot links. <laughs> yeah. Short printable reports with hot links. I mean, because most people want the people who want to click on the link will, and the people who don't wind up not wasting as many trees. So that's <laughs> and and th those pages, if you remember them, they there are lots of them, even though they're landscape and microscopic font. So, Sean, we're getting a strong recommendation not to bring in the detailed spreadsheet that goes out five years with all the line items and just do a link, and not to bring in the vehicle. So. Short, short, it's just the much shorter appendices. I'm not Wait. even sure I'd include, in, uh, now that I see the unspent funds, it's all in that report. We could just hot link to that one. Okay. So then it'll just be the one five year one that, cause we're talking about that with the 10%, the 10 and a half percent. Okay. That's, that's easy. <laughs> Okay. Will, will we will we also have a future placeholder once the building inventory? Like right now, I wouldn't put the building inventory in because it's outdated. But is that like just so we don't drop it in the future? Is that all? Should that also be a hot link in the future? Yeah. I, no. I I think and we can put it. We can put one in now because they have it. It's in the same place. You know, one to vehicle, one to building. We can just say this is going to be available. Be available. But but. but, but. Sean didn't think the building one was as accurate as the vehicle one. You know, I so agree hundred percent. I wouldn't put it in. I just didn't want it to drop like next year. I just wanted to like mentally put a placeholder for it. Kathy, can I speak to that one? Sure. Um, and what we, you know, unless Jeremiah can do the full review of all the facilities by the time uh, the town manager presents this, which I don't think he can, you know, what we'll probably do is take out the conditions of the buildings but still leave some of the other information about, you know, the zone it's in and, um, you know, the, the assessed value and some of that stuff we can still leave in there. So it's still useful to some extent, but we'll probably take the conditions out until those can be updated. And Sean, could you put, I see your hand is up, Andy, but I just want to ask one. So then for vehicles and for this, you know, we can link to the whole report you gave us at the beginning, or if you can pull vehicles out to be its own, report somewhere and this unspent funds, then we can link specifically to that. We can talk about that later. Right now it's all in one large document. 
except for Sean very nicely gave me everything as an appendix. <laughs> so yeah, we can we can do whatever, um, however you want to set it up is fine. Okay, Andy. Yeah, I guess that uh, I feel like you have, we may have punted a little bit on the five year plan. I actually think that the five year plan is important and we didn't really give it the attention that we probably should have. Uh, and it also serves not only an educational purpose for us, but for um, all of the elected boards and for the community at large. And I would give you one example, uh, just because a neighbor made this inquiry the other day, and that was uh, Puffer's Pond, the beach and the dredging as to when it was going to happen and if it was going to happen. And the only thing I had to look back on was the most recent five-year plan that I could lay my hands on, but it was important to have it. And um, I have to think that that's uh, an important expenditure that we need to be planning for. But uh, if, you know, part of our role is to be thinking about what are the needs of the town in the long run and are we making adequate plans and prioritization for it and what are our recommendations because ultimately it is about recommendations we don't uh, make the final decision we just make recommendations um, so I don't know that I would I would include it in the report um, in its entirety but I think that we need to say a little bit more to and even give an example of a section or something, maybe the summary section, so that um, anybody who looks at the, this report will understand the significance of the five-year plan and if, why they should be looking for that at that hot link. So Andy, could you say, I'd be happy to write, so I think you're saying add a few paragraphs that at least describe what's in it and then create the link. So, I mean, you know, you can go across and see how much we'd be spending on roads, for example, or how much on vehicles over the five-year period without having to, because right now the suggestion has been remove the detailed Excel, you know, just so looking at the past couple of years of JCP reports, we never talked much about any, in any detail of what was in those five years, but the Excel spreadsheets were always there. So you could, you could see it. Um, so I, I'm just, if you could say what, whether you want to write some, have some additional words put in here. Yeah. I mean, I think that you, you, you've stated exactly right and not a whole lot of words, but enough words that people understand what it is that they're going to be looking at if they look at the link. Um, Okay. And uh, you know, down to the fact you not don't have to, have to name a project, but to say that um, to see what um, is being proposed for funding in future years over the uh, over the five year plan, um, that information is available at the link. Okay, so I will take a stab at a draft of that um, just as a separate piece. Um, you know, and, and the other thing that isn't here at all is the things that aren't on the list. You know, Sean gave us that what didn't make the list. So if people want to find the new senior center, it's not in the five-year plan right now. You know, so it's, um, so I'll take a stab at a short paragraph that makes you eager to go and find the detailed spreadsheet, not just, huh, there's one that exists somewhere. Yeah, and the yeah. example you gave is a perfectly good one because if somebody's interested in the senior center and they, if you just give them enough to go to look at the link and then they can say, wait a minute, it's not here. Why is it not here? At least they've gotten that much information. That's, uh, and I think that's sufficient. Okay. Kathy, can I say something on that yeah. too? Um, so just on the, the Puffer's Pond one, because that was raised, I think that was on the pending list in the capital improvement program that we discussed. So that, you know, that's why we created that list. It is on the radar. Um, it's just not on the plan yet because it, it didn't rise to being something that would be done in the next five years without grant funding um, at this point in time. And then the only thing I would caution is to, 
and, and maybe I'm viewing this wrong, I view this again as a recommendation to the town manager and that a lot of the information that you're talking about is gonna be in the town manager's capital improvement program. And that's probably the more public facing document that we would wanna make sure has all the information that you're talking about because that'll be what goes to council and, and, um, and to finance committee and gets voted. So I just wanna make sure we don't spend too much time trying to add things here to that will that are sort of already in that capital final capital improvement program that'll go to council. Then maybe what Kathy will consider writing is not um, is simply that. What would we like to see in yeah. the plan that the, that the manager is going to submit, so that there's some direction there, and maybe that is will meet the need. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's the right way to go. And and again, all the feedback from the very beginning of this process has been really helpful at trying to make that package as good as possible before it goes to the council. So I think that's the right way to go. Peter. Yeah, uh, Sean, you brought up my favorite topic, the pending list. Um, so uh, Paul, um, you've, you've, you've heard my soapbox on this. Um, the notion that we, we do feas feasibility studies, but before they are discussed and greenlit by the appropriate committee, they should not be on the pending list, or at least on a list that says they're pending as soon as we get the money. Is this, is this something you're in agreement with? So, so I've heard that your, your comment on that, Peter. <laughs> um, you know, it, we, we do have to recognize that there's work that needs, needs to be done in our capital building. So, you know, Sean and I have had some preliminary discussions about exactly how to recognize that need. Um, and whether and where it shows up, you know, there there are a number of things in, in there that I, I don't really have an answer for you because we, you know, if you want to make a recommendation, this committee can make a recommendation. Yeah, and just to add to what um, the town manager said is, you know, we we're sort of waiting to get the feedback from this committee to then circle back to the original sort of package that we shared with you so that we can make those adjustments. So, you know, we're sort of looking for this committee's input on how that was presented. Um, to see if we should, and, and we've got, obviously, Peter, we've got strong input from you on, on your thoughts on that. So um, if there are other, you know, if anybody else has input on that, um, we would take that into consideration too before making the final draft. I guess um, Carrie's hand is up. So I think I said this back up, I don't know, the first or second meeting, but regarding that list, I just felt like um, it It almost seemed like that we could make two lists or maybe like make different categories within the list so that um, there are things that are just delayed, but are kind of, for lack of a better term, like sh shovel ready, but you know, aren't on the list yet. And then there are things that um, are vaguer, you know, in, in the sense that Peter's talking about where they need to go through all of these additional steps in order to get approval. And, you know, I like the fact that there was a range and we didn't pick a specific number um, for the Crocker Farm thing, but it, it did feel like it was out of place on that list. And either we need to add in more similar types of projects. I'm sure the Crocker Farm schools aren't the only um, buildings that are going to need that kind of level of investment um, in the future. So I just, it, it stuck out to me because it, it just felt like one of these things isn't like the other and and, and finding a way to um, recognize that while also recognizing that the fact that Crocker Farm is likely going to need some sort of investment in the future. So, so did, would people, so I think the suggestion now is on the five-year plan to make sure, recommend to the town manager that he highlight what is on that plan and what is on a more delayed list um, um, with a couple examples. And then do we also wanna say, and then have this future list include these, our recommendation was two kinds of categories. One, we will go if we find grant funds, but it's grant fund depending. And the second would be, we haven't really formulated exactly what, what elements would go into it, but we know we're gonna to have to spend money we just haven't determined what that is yet. It hasn't gone through all the processes. Do we want to make that as a recommendation? I mean, he's clearly heard what we're saying. <laughs> so, um, Aunt Mandy? Yeah, I, 
I, I think I would like it as a recommendation in that section, um, just so it's written down that, that you know, there was some um, uncomfortableness with the way that particular page was presented and all. And I do definitely like Carrie's um, idea of shovel ready versus not shovel ready, but known, you know, I mean, because other than the schools, most of them look like these are things that we just couldn't fit into this plan right now, but they would go if we could and they're ready to go. And then there was the schools and you could add to that the library, the not the library, the senior center, the Hickory Ridge improvements potentially, you know, there's a whole bunch of things you could add to that that say, here's some things that are on a horizon that we don't know what their costs are. We know that there's going to be something dealt with, but we don't want to lose track of them. So we didn't want to not put them on somewhere in this document. Okay. Okay, Sean can Sean heard this too, so he can help me word it. So what you'll see it in a draft with not me just looking at my handwriting. Um, Peter and yeah, Alex. Real quick, so I, I like that suggestion about being able to articulate these the shovel ready versus. Um, whatever the language is, but something that denotes, you know, further consideration or process is needed. And again, just because this is a public meeting, I, I know I'm a broken record, but I have to say, I'm not saying this because I'm against any specific items in the Crocker Farm study, because I know that there are some members of the public, which is perfectly fine, who feel one way or the other on some or more or all of those items. Uh, it's, it's, it's the process. It's more thinking about the uh, the involvement of, of, of the greater co school committee in terms of a, a thing that would require a school committee decision. Alex? Yeah, I guess I'm kind of following up with the idea. I, <clears throat> I, I like the idea of not having 8,000 hot links and 8,000 documents. And I'm wondering um, if there is a suggestion in the future, right? Like if we have a vehicle inventory and a building inventory, like, are those documents that we can somehow use or do we need like a third document? Like I'm trying to think how we have a place where we can sort of see all of the things and where they are from a condition versus need at some point in the future and, and, and just helping people to understand like we see all of these things. And like, I, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out, I don't have a suggestion. I, I just like, I think to the extent that we could sort of contain things into smaller packages that are manageable for the public to be able to pull up that would be good. Um, and I definitely like the idea of maybe instead of us having all the hot links in our document, instead making recommendations about what the town manager puts in his document. I think that makes sense. So there might be that we could recommend, um, there is a web page called the capital plan or something like this. And then you could have something called vehicle in inventory, building in and it would get updated whenever. Um, so it could, you could just say, recommend a page that captures both the Word document and others. Um, okay, got it. Because right now we can't hot link to anything other than the report we were given on February <laughs> that was drafted on February 5th or 11th. There isn't a hot link to a vehicle inventory. Um, uh, so other other suggestions, just conscious of the time. I think we've done a lot of work. Um, so um, I will commit to getting a draft back by Monday morning. Um, if there were sentences, um, everyone has the word version of this, just send me anything we didn't mention, you know, sentences when you look at it didn't sit you right. Um, if Alex wants to do a read through, I can send her the edited version or we can just all come together next week, um, you know, to say, do we have a final document? Does, does that work for everyone? Um, I'm just looking, we have, uh, we actually have no public attendees right now. I was gonna say now we could call for public comments if we're finished, but I don't see any public. We either outlasted them or they, they're waiting to watch the film. Yeah, um, but no one's, no one's heard any complaints that like they couldn't get into the meeting, right? I Which is odd to me that we've had zero, um, we've had very few 
attendees throughout this process. We have had a couple, um, but we've had very few. I don't know if it's a seven o'clock time slot or, or what. It may, be, it may be the time slot. You know, I, um, I've i heard only one person ask to get the, um, the Zoom tapes up sooner so that they could be watched later. And so I think it's possibly that we're working through people's dinner times. Okay. Good. As long as nobody's heard anything, I'm fine. I'm not sure. no, no one has told me that they couldn't, couldn't figure out what Sean's we were Sean's about worried about his, Sean is worried about his ratings. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I thought this process, I thought this, you know, this group's done good work this year. So, you know, we haven't had a lot of publicity on that front. No, I, and I just want to um, just say again, and we can tell you that next week. To me, it made a huge difference what you gave us at the very beginning. I mean, just it, it made, you know, I started, Sean read my very first draft of this, and I tried to mimic the draft from two years ago. And that was still written as if it was going to the town meeting to try to explain each article. But it was like, okay, we know we're just giving advice to Paul, you know, at this point um, and trying to focus it down. And you gave us enough information to, to work with. And I, I, we really appreciate it. So I think unless anyone has um, anything else, you know, the minutes for this meeting will be that we revise the report and we'll have a revised report come out and Sean gave us minutes last week. So we're actually up to date on minutes. Um, and I thank everyone very much, including patience with me writing a sentence down, which you would like to just throw out or totally rework. I think that actually was ex a good thing to have happened and that meant people read it. So thank you all. And we'll see you next thank week. You. Thank see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work, Kathy. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome.